Hello everybody, today is a perfume video and I expect this probably to be a rather interesting topic for most of you because I received over the years that I've been filming on YouTube about perfumes numerous numerous questions about showing my full perfume collection. It's rather large. I just don't think it's going to do anybody any good just for me to talk about all the perfumes that I have. I'm going to talk about the perfumes that I want to talk about and feel strongly about. So this is probably as close as you're going to get to the collection at least at this point so what's going on here is I am cleaning out my perfume drawers and I received those comments and you know you guys were absolutely right uh, when you were telling me you know <laughs> you're minimalist you really don't own a ton of stuff but you have quite a bit of makeup and you have a lot of perfumes and that is true those are the two last bastions <laughs> two last um, things to conquer for me in terms of minimalism and I probably won't be completely minimal in my perfume and makeup but I think it's time to cut down at least cut out the things that are very easy to cut out and today I'm going to cut my perfume collection by maybe 15% 10% 15% um, I have 12 fragrances I'm getting rid of I went through my perfume collection and I decided which ones I'm gonna part with and really the criteria is a quality but B really what am I not reaching for what do I not see myself wearing in the future it's not necessarily perfumes that I feel are not good quality it's fragrances that I feel are good fragrances I'm gonna sell them you know um, just to recoup at least some of the financial loss but you know I'm gonna sell them for cheap so people can just at least use them and somebody has them and uses them up instead of me hoarding them for no reason whatsoever so I'm sure you guys are curious so let's get into it we'll start with um, Clarence Eau de Nebisant. I've spoken about this fragrance and I think it's actually a very interesting scent. I found myself not reaching for it. The bottle is about almost maybe a third empty. So I really definitely got my use out of this fragrance. I haven't been reaching for it. It's not a fragrance style that I've been into for the last year or so. And that's really how I'm judging. Are these the fragrances that I'm really reaching for over the last year or so? They're all reasonably new or very new. Um, and certainly all of them are within the expiration date and still smell correct um, so I think it's good for me to try either to give them away to people who might like them or to sell them there are certainly some very sellable fragrances this one I'm, I, I think I'm just gonna give away so Eau de Nebisant by Clarence um, no issue with the, with the fragrance quality but I just haven't been reaching for it now these these are I have issue <laughs> so I'm a big fan of Guerlain I'm a big fan of Shalimar um, I am not a fan of Shalimar Souffle. <laughs> this is the sort of a flanker of a flanker. Um, they're closest probably to the Parfum Initial, which I really like. Um, but classic Shalimars to me are beautiful, gorgeous, extremely lovely works of art, perfume art. The Souffle collection, however, is weird. I've gotten initially the Souffle de Parfum and had trouble wearing it because it's citrusy and seems like it should be a fluffy cloud, but it doesn't sit like that on skin. It sits heavy, but not comfortable or cozy, just kind of heavy and a bit weird. It has an odd presence to it. I struggled wearing it. I wore it just a small amount. As you can see, the, the bottle is almost completely full. I'll be selling it. It's, you know, it's a beautiful scent on its own, but it's better on paper than on skin. On skin, it just turns very odd. Um, my skin brings out some metallic, weird um, background notes that I do not enjoy. And this effect is really exacerbated by putting into the souffle de lumière. There's nothing lumière about it. This is even more weirdly light but heavy. It, I, I struggle to find a, a season to wear these. It doesn't make sense to wear them in the summer because they turn into hard, stony, steely sort of uh, fragrances on my skin um, in warm weather. And in cold weather, there's really, they feel better in colder weather. But for some reason, you know, in colder weather, I really crave something a little more cozy and soft and comfortable and comforting. And these are cold fragrances. They are um, you know, they, they are a bit bitchy and I'm, I'm just, I'm not into them and I'm going to let them go. This is absolutely new. This is like a few months old. I've tried to wear it a few times and it's just a fail. I wish I kept the receipt. I wish I kept the bottle. I would return it in a heartbeat, but I am an idiot. And there are a couple of fragrances here that are absolutely new 
and I'm just like I failed to keep the documentation I can't send them back so they're gonna be sold at least I'll try to sell them the next one is the original angel by Terry Mugley and this is a beautiful scent but it sinks me it is so heavy no matter how I dose it even if I dose it like a fraction of a pump it's it's like a chain around my neck it's too much my sense of scent is overwhelmed by this fragrance it's very beautiful lots of people love it I don't anticipate myself having an issue selling it it's an absolutely full bottle but I haven't been reaching for it just because it you know on occasion I feel like it really works but it's not a reliable scent for me because overdosing on this is super easy and then I feel slightly sick. I, it's just I can't dose it right. It's too concentrated, it's too heavy, it's too much. It suffocates me. I can't stomach it anymore. There was a time where I actually went through the entire bottle, which is why I bought another bottle. I can't do it. I, I'm, I think I'm angeled out. Uh, next we have Tom Ford Velvet Orchid again full bottle. I've already sold my black orchid a while ago and Tom Ford is really easy to sell on the used fragrances market um, and black, uh, black orchid was harsh and a bit assaulting on me and uh, velvet orchid is much softer, it's a bit sweeter it's an easier fragrance to pull off but I'm just not reaching for it. I have my black Clinique fragrance and I love it much more and it's sort of within the same, it, it creates the same emotion, the same feeling, but I prefer the Clinique over this. So I'm not reaching for it, it's just standing there. Um, somebody needs to love it because this is a lovely, lovely scent. It's just, I haven't been using it. Um, another scent that is new and I should have returned, but I don't have the receipt for it. And then you'll, you'll see this within, um, within this video, I, I'm stupid when it comes to fragrance shopping because I used to emotionally shop for fragrances a lot. This is um, fairly new as well in my collection. If you watch my videos, you know that. Elizabeth and James Nirvana Fringe Grey. And this is a lovely lavender, slightly powdery, very sophisticated scent really. Bought a full freaking huge bottle emotionally, obviously, and I've used it a few times. It's completely full, the bottle, because you don't need a lot. Um, and this is an Eau de Parfum 100 ml giant honker of a bottle. Um, it does, does not work for me. <laughs> you know, I really tried to wear it and I love the scent on its own, but I love the scent on its own better than I like it on me. It's a very gentle, very sophisticated, ladylike, beautiful scent that I'm not going to reach for because it does not sit well on me. And it the bottle is beautiful. The Art Deco decor of the bottle, um, design of the bottle is beautiful gorgeous i'm a big fan of elizabeth and james they have some good good picks in their fragrances and i like this but i'm not gonna wear it so somebody else might as well get used out of it I'm, I'm just not using it and i'm not going to i know i'm not going to i know me i know what i'm reaching for i have my kenzos and i have my chanel's and i have you know i have my stuff that i'm constantly reaching for this is just not one of them um i have a couple of light-hearted perfumes that I'm getting rid of and both of them are quite well used um, mostly because I really tried to like them like I consciously picked them out and worked on them this is Aqua di Gioia by Giorgio Armani this is about a year and a half old it's about halfway um, empty maybe a little bit over half empty I'm gonna sell it for a couple of bucks online basically and it is a sugary citrusy number there's nothing offensive about it but I'm bored with it I, I don't find it interesting um, same can be said about Dolce & Gabbana light blue again honker of a bottle about halfway empty I have about 100 ml remaining because it's a 200 ml bottle um, it's another toilet of course and it is a citrusy slightly powdery slightly floral, floral scent I'm not bothered by it anymore. I tried to use it. I really tried to work on it. I just don't care about it. Um, I'm over it completely. Same can be said about this Tom Ford, um, which I think is going to be easy to sell as well. It's basically a full bottle because I did try to wear it. This is Tom Ford Neroli Partofino Aqua. Uh, it's a nice Neroli citrusy, lighthearted, slightly bitter scent. I do like it, that's why I bought it. But again, I bought it in the airport on a whim. I'm like, traveling, Florida, what can I wear in Florida? I'm gonna get myself a Tom Ford, but which one? Maybe one that isn't so heavy. Ended up with this, it's fine. I'm not gonna reach for it. It's not, it's not a masterpiece to me. 
it's not all that interesting and I'm gonna part with it and somebody else might like it much better than I have. A uh, fragrance that I've definitely worked on and uh, used some is this limited edition bottle, but this is just the original La Petite Rouge Noire from Guerlain. And this is a 50 ml, so thankfully at least it's not a honker of a bottle. It's not huge like some of the other ones. I have bad habits when it comes to perfume shopping. I need to work on that and I am currently working on it. There hasn't been a lot of purchasing going on um, in the last little while, which I am happy about. But anyway, this guy is slightly used. It's it's very sweet, very berry, very girly and lighthearted and a little bit pouty. I think it's cute. My husband really likes the scent, but since they've made the Black Perfecto, I'm really always reaching for the other one. I'm not I'm never reaching for this one anymore, and they're similar enough for me to want to use the other one. This one just lost its charm for me because it's simply too sweet and there's not enough substance to it in terms of, you know, I'm looking for something, some contrast maybe, something interesting for the fragrance. This is really, really sweet berries. Um, so I've moved on from it basically. Uh, then I have, oh, this was a huge disappointment. I like wanted to cry when I received it and smelled it. This is Meteorized Le Parfum by Guerlain. Of course, it's a beautiful bottle. And all in all, I was really hopeful that this was going to smell like my meteorites. <laughs> I mean, it's called meteorites. Why is it not smelling like meteorites? I'm going to tell you what I think this smells like. But it's not meteorites at all. Um, they did release meteorites previously, the perfume. Um, and I thought that it was decent and it did um, it did smell different than this one. So this is not the re-release of the original. If you want the original that was like released in 2000 or something, back in the early 2000s at some point, that was really pretty. <laughs> it, was, it was much better. This is crap. Oh my god. You know, Guerlain? Guerlain. And, and more Guerlain. I am like gonna cry because this used to be one of my favorite perfume houses and nowadays it is disappointment after disappointment after disappointment and you can see I'm getting rid of most of it. Another one that was a re very recent purchase and I had lost the freaking box because I could have re uh, returned it to Sephora. I had the packing slip and everything. I've lost the box. I thought I'd try to get through it. It was like a hundred some bucks poorly spent and the scent sucks. It smells nothing like meteorites. It smells like apples, green apples, a little bit of berries and a little bit of powdery violets, but it is not meteorites. Who the hell came up with this? Like, what the heck? So disappointed. This smells like DKNY green apple with a little bit of powder. It sucks. It sucks. And it doesn't hold well. It doesn't wear well. It is disappointment after disappointment after disappointment. I didn't like it. Somebody else will probably like it. And it's, like I said, completely new and very fresh and not my thing at all. I wanted meteorites. Unfortunately, boutiques around me, they, they didn't have samples of this to smell. So I ordered it blind because I just used to be such a big fan of, of Guerlain. But the, their recent releases are just crap. Honestly, they're crap. Not all of them, but most of them. So I'm thinking of making a video about Guerlain and their last maybe five years of um, fragrance releases. And I seriously think that the fragrance house in the last five to ten years went so far down the hill. It was, it's just, it's painful to watch what they're doing to their fragrances. Um, what they're releasing is just garbage most of the time. There are a couple of good things here and there, but it's mostly garbage. And I'm talking about the designer fragrances, not the um, not the private collection, because that's that's different, and the quality is different, and the releases are different. And I'm much more inclined to go that way with Guerlain at this point. But I was so intrigued. I used to love Guerlain. I have so many classics from them that I still love and wear. And to see them go down and, and do this is like, what the hell is going on? Super disappointed. So I think I'm going to make a separate video and we, we can go through the releases of recent years and we can talk about which ones were worthwhile because I tried most of them from the designer range, um, if not all of them. And I still own only a few of the newer um, Guerlain fragrances. Most of my Guerlain fragrances are the classics that... They carry and the newer ones are just ultra disappointing so 
keep 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 an ear out and let me know if you want me to film that sooner rather than later because I will mostly because of I'm enraged by it but you know if it's not interesting to you also let me know maybe I won't film it just keep it to myself so that's what I'm doing that's what's going on with my fragrances I've gotten rid of 12 today I still have a ton of scents I don't suspect to end up with like one or two fragrances but seriously I don't need as many as I have and these I'm not even using so what am I doing with them some of them are really quite great and I do enjoy like for instance the orchid uh, I would recommend uh, the Elizabeth and James is a good scent um, even the the La Petite Robe Noir I think is a decent scent otherwise eh, not so much I am getting rid of one of the fragrances I used to wear and it's um, it's a, a male fragrance it's Dior Homme uh, for men and this is Eau de and honestly, I use uh, Taylor Swift Incredible Things nowadays for the same kind of slightly masculine effect, which this one gives me, so I just don't reach for it. So I'm going to sell that as well. Um, but out of all of the fragrances that I'm talking about here, probably these three are going to be the ones that I'm going to say are excellent quality and they work well. It's just I reach for other things over them. But the things that are terrible quality, this is really poor quality. And the Shalimars, the Souffle ones, are just odd to me. So I don't think they're poor quality, but they're just a weird formula. I don't really know why they chose to go in that direction. They sit really oddly on skin. The Dior Arm is pretty good. Um, these ones, I'm, I'm thinking, I'm just like, why did I even buy them? Um, Angel also goes actually with the fragrances that I would recommend because it is an interesting scent. It's just for me, it's it, it suffocates me. And that's okay. That's okay. It's not for everybody. But I, I'm sure that I'll have easier time selling some of them than others. We'll see. I'll let you know. And that's it. That's it for today. Let me know down below if you are getting rid of any fragrances. If so, which ones are you letting go of? And what do you think of my declutter? Let's see, let's talk about it. Let's talk about decluttering fragrances. This is a new territory for me. I don't normally declutter fragrances easily, so I'm letting things go. Letting space into my life, clearing it out. That's it for today. I hope it was fun for you guys to watch what I'm doing here with my declutter. And have a good day. See you later. Bye-bye.